And welcome, uh, Mad PD professional development from the comfort of your own home. I'm Helen DeWard. I'm here to share about Sounds Abound. And maybe we can have the people who are here with me uh, just introduce themselves, let, let us know where you are, and uh, um, maybe why you feel strongly about recording student audio. I'll start. Uh, I'm Rola Tipshirani from Ottawa. I teach grade six French immersion, and I definitely strong about students' audio is for students to really capture their thinking and their their learning process as well, and to reflect on and to share with others and build that knowledge together. Thanks, Autumn. Hi, I'm Autumn Keynes. Um, I'm in the States. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and I um, work at Capital University in the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. I'm the Associate Director of Academic Technology. I also teach a first-year seminar in digital citizenship. Um, I think it's just so important because for me, I think that um, video is great, but it's really audio that is that makes the difference people will forgive an audience will forgive bad video but they won't forgive bad audio thanks jenny hi i'm jenny Heyman. i'm a program manager for eCampus ontario uh, and a really big open education advocate in addition in a from a former life a jazz musician and so the issue of sound for me uh, in terms of music education and student expression uh, is extremely important and uh, and a real empowering moment for students when they hear their own voices and practice recording and um, just learn about how fi sound files actually work and sharing them thank you lee Hi, uh, my name is Lee Castle. I'm a technology coach with the Avon Maitland District School Board and I also am founder and president of the Digital Human Library. I'm very interested in video and, and audio and how we use technology to not only document and share the work that we're doing but as a tool to communicate and collaborate with others and network to learn. Thank you. And Mamuna. You can unmute. There we go. Sorry. Thanks. I'm trying Thank to do you. this on different things. <laughs> no problem. Um, I'm Amona Brace, and I'm a vice principal uh, and teacher out at an elementary uh, school, Bell Park. And uh, I've been interested in technology forever. And the audio piece, uh, I guess, probably a long, long time ago, I used to do radio plays. And uh, that audio piece, and with the big old cassettes, you know, and the headphones and all that. So being able to do that digitally is something that uh, is valuable. There's so many reasons and so many ways you can use it and so powerful. Thank you. Your experience, I think, will be valuable here. Hi, hi to everyone. So I'm just going to share um, insights from... Um, from what I do and why I do it. Um, let me just see if I can, there we go. Um, I teach te teacher candidates to work with digital media. And let's go into present mode. And I like to use audio predominantly are, are you seeing the full presentation? We're not, not yet. Helen. Not no, yet. we're just not we're yet. still seeing the the thing. Did just you share speak. your desktop or did you share the application? I shared. Oh, let me just stop sharing for a moment. Application is better. Actually, mm -hmm. I think desktop is better. Oh, really? Yeah, because it won't let you go full screen unless you share desktop. If you share okay. just the application, because the browser it doesn't it doesn't recognize the full it's screen. Entire entire screen, but it's only showing my one screen. So give me a second to cancel that. Escape over here. Exit, and I'll bring it over because I I tend to work with two screens, two monitors. So that was my downfall. I thought it would work. I see. Well. Yeah. And now I'm waiting for it to exit. So anyway, the um, the purpose for audio is to break away from um, just 
thinking and considering that media is the only way to go. Oh, I'm frozen. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. And now I will share screen again. And entire screen. And here, oh, holy smokes. Ooh. That's what it does when that, you do that. It, it, yeah, you have to come yeah. Yeah, do the applique, the other part. Okay, thank you. That one of my, there we go. And now we'll present. Thanks, Rola. <laughs> okay. Everybody still there? Still here. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you seeing the presentation? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So sounds abound in terms of uh, using sound um, for students. Uh, in terms of just recording sounds and and letting students explore sounds, playing in the digital uh, sound sandbox before the performance piece. And I think Jenny, you can you can uh, verify that there's a lot of uh, practice, practice, practice that has to happen before you actually record a performance quality piece of sound um, for students um, to just explore um, audio and recording tools and resources, listening to their own voices. So ultimately, why do we want to do this? Um, assessment for of as learning it's that reflective feedback audio feedback um, students hearing their own voices and then thinking um, what the message they're trying to share uh, talking about um, pre and post assessment of learning even simple as, as running records for younger students being able to review those for error analysis without having to do them at the Helen, I hate, to I hate to interrupt you, but we are not seeing your, your slides. I just wanted to let you know. Okay. Now we're seeing, now we're seeing the slides, and but we're seeing okay. them in um, edit view, but I think that that's fine. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, that's okay. So, <laughs> thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> so, capturing student voice over time. So, it's a summary of learning. It's a reflection of learning. And ultimately, it breaks away from that barrier that video creates for a lot of students. You can't assume that they're going to be comfortable in, in any of the digital spaces until they've had a chance to, um, to, to play in those spaces and make media. Um, and, and I like to think about the um, oral traditions and storytelling because the students I work with do uh, digital storytelling. And a, comp a component of that is the audio that they put within the story to, um, to share their story. And whether they record their own voices or not is, is their choice or their decision. So ultimately, that's why recording is so important. But for me, it's, it's combining and connecting it to media literacy as a big part of their learning and using this media literacy triangle to think about the, um, the audience, predominantly the audience and the production piece. Do they want to add sound effects? Do they want to add music? Do they um, want to use their own voice or record somebody else's voice? Do they want to add specific you know, character enhanced voices, for example? And the big piece too is to bring in that awareness of copyright and Creative Commons licensing and, and what kinds of sounds are they using? Are they um, Creative Commons licensed already? Are they remixing? Are they allowed to remix without attribution? That sort of thing. Um, and the how, in terms of uh, for my students, just knowing that they don't need to, uh, you know full quality sound studio because we rarely have those available to us, but some good quality tools that will make a difference. Um, I use a uh, blue snowball to capture, uh, to capture sound um, when I'm doing a, a small group project, for example, and then each individual voice can go into the, into the recording. 
or a good headset with a microphone if it's an individual recording. And then again, checking to see if there's consistency between the sound quality. One of the students this year recorded her audio component for her digital story several times to make sure that the pacing and the recording sounded consistent throughout the story. So what can we use? There's a variety of uh, microphones that will make a difference. Like I said, it's nice to see blue, um, the blue snowball uh, for, for younger students because they can all kind of get around it. Um, the one that I'm really interested in now is this binaural 3D um, uh, audio headset because it will do sound in 3D and it will come into and record the way 360 video will record. So it'll be an interesting tool to investigate. Uh, recording and creating sounds with a variety of tools. Um, and again, giving students a chance to play with the different uh, tools, different tools that they have available to them, whether they're mobile tools or whether they're computer-based tools. My favorite to introduce to the, the students is Audacity because of the ability to, to um, clip and cut and, and amplify the, the sound quality and layer sound um, as one of the easiest tools to use. And, and remembering to introduce students to the, the audio file types that happen automatically and how to convert file types. And it was really interesting to see Roland Chidiak's session earlier this morning. Um, he talked about uh, audio that he do, it does with his students. And one of the uh, tools that he has is this uh, con audio converter from a video file to an audio file. So when can you use um, audio in the classroom? Like I said, it could be any kinds of adaptations, radio plays, choral reading, acting out stories and scripts that the students have, have read or have created, radio reports, it could be test responses, book reports, uh, PSAs are one of my favorites, and again, assessments. So where do you go? There are, here's a, a summary of recording options. Um, lots of different tools that are um, readily available and free to use for teachers in classrooms anywhere. And you can uh, upload and download uh, to a variety of places depending on what you've got access to. Google Drive is a quick and easy one. SoundCloud, um, again, you have to pay attention to permission settings and security with SoundCloud if you're working with younger students to make sure that they're um, uh, safe and, and secure. And where can you showcase? Again, just showcasing and linking to a Google Drive file or embedding URLs depending on where you, uh, if you have a class blog, for example, you can embed the files from uh, a Google Drive or a, a SoundCloud file. So the next set of slides are just an assortment of tools, how you can access them, what the benefits are for each of the tools. I tend to go with ones that are A, free for the students to use. CC Mixture is now one of the places where I'll go to first in order to find um, music tracks to support and, and use as a backdrop for um, voiced audio files uh, because you can um, specifically select um, specific individual audio tracks. Uh, free Music Archive is another one that I, I tend to use and Jamindo um, I like. Waves in terms of uh, um, sharing your voice as a teacher. I'm going to advocate for um, Voice Ed Canada, where there are uh, podcasts and, and voice recordings that are, are meaningful and, and have content that will make a difference in the ed, ed tech sector, ed sector in Canada, if you haven't seen it before. And locally, we have a school board that has their own radio, their live radio station, and they do live uh, and recorded productions, uh, Simcoe County District School Board uh, radio um, location. And then there's lots of resources. So we will stop sharing and go back to conversation about audio recording and um, if there are any specific tools um, other than blue snowballs 
or Rode mics that you've used for audio recording and and sharing file audio files. I've got one that I'm really excited um, about these days. Sorry, go ahead. You, oh, you okay. go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it's it's a uh, it's from Samson, and they just started making it last year. It's a USB based uh, lavalier microphone. And so I've, I've always struggled with having a lav mic because usually the receiver for a lav mic is this big honking thing with antennas coming off of it. And it's, you know, you've got to have like a, what is it, an XLR uh, connectors and all of those kind of things. This is just uh, seriously like a, a little USB stick that you stick into your computer. That acts as the receiver. You can fire up Audacity or anything else, and you can pin the lavalier microphone onto somebody and get a really nice, uh, really nice audio directional if you do need that. The one drawback to it is that you can't do multiple, so you can't have you can't buy two of them and have uh, you know have have multiple people doing it. But it is uh, it's a great little tool that I've really been enjoying. Neat. Thank you. Um, I've used uh, GarageBand and Audacity as well. I love Audacity. I've put together, you know, you can really put together nicely the files and everything. And GarageBand, what I do like about it is that not only do you get that podcast, you know, the audio piece, but then they can create their own music. So tying in for the, the music piece. And um, I'll use uh, the iRig microphone. Have you guys ever heard of that? The iRig microphone? Yeah. Now, um, it's uh, it's good. My only complaint is that the cases, uh, when you're putting it in, you need a longer pin, so you have to actually take the case off and use it on the iPad. Uh, but it is it is a good tool to use. Thank you. Thank you for sharing these amazing tools, and especially to know that they are all free, and it has such a huge impact for students' thinking to to share their voice and share their learning. Thank you. So, so Jenny, have you done um, recording with students at the higher ed level? Um, well, I voice thread has become a thing <laughs> in higher ed, but again, it's part of the learning management system. Uh, I haven't explored as much uh, as many free tools. I personally use every tool under the sun when I'm recording something or talking about something or doing podcasts, um, uh, but haven't explored it so much with students. But it's such a rich area of exploration for things like uh, poetry and spoken word, um, and again, you know, the making of podcasts. So all students are creators of knowledge, right? So. So this is really just one more opportunity for that to be true. Um, I had a question, Helen, just because I'm curious, uh, and it, it may be a new area of exploration. Have you talked much with students and teachers about um, uh, inclusive design? So audio is a <laughs> requires hearing, right? <laughs> and if uh, if you struggle with hearing uh, in a in at various in various ways, um, I know the Inclusive Design Research Center um, over at OCAD U is talking quite a bit about soundscapes and how that uh, how the hard of hearing community can take advantage of that. Is that it's something you've explored with students? What happens if someone can't hear? Yes, actually, we do because uh, a big piece of what um, we talk about are, is is UDL, Universal Design for Learning, and making sure that that um, individuals can access, if they want to access, how do they access? And and simple things like providing the t the text that goes with the um, the the sound file, so that that people can access it. Just like transcripts with video, um, you provide the transcript with an audio file. And there are certain, I think I under, my understanding is that there are certain sound waves, certainly the lower bass waves that actually can be felt uh, as opposed to heard. I'm just kind of interested in, in playing around in that space and experimenting a little bit with how that might work. Uh, say for my students, it's around how to connect the sound specifically to add depth and layers to a digital story. Um, and, and making sure that the sounds fit the story and the voice fits the story. So some of them were very um, uh, disheartened with the quality of the sound. So they were looking for better sound recording tools. Um, 
you know, with students in the classroom, it really depends on what the performance piece is going to look like and, and who the audience may be at the end of it. Yeah, then you adapt the tools and the recording for that. So thank you very much. I did hint, said it would be a quick, a quick and easy introduction to sound. I know that there are other people uh, during this day today um, talking about sound recording and, and the purposes behind recording sound and breaking away from um, thinking video is the only mechanism, the only media, the way students uh, can engage. So I really appreciate your presence here today. If there's nothing, any, any other added um, sound ideas? Uh, well, uh, sorry, obviously using it for um, reluctant readers. And um, it's a great way to take away, especially when kids struggle with that fine motor. Um, it allows them to get their ideas out and hear themselves and then fluency. I mean, just even simple applications like that. And they can add sound effects if they want or not. But just it's such a powerful tool to use for that person, who, that child who just doesn't feel like they're a reader yet they can or that they're a writer yet and to show them that they can and the other piece is the introvert who may not want to talk in front of the whole class um exactly. they can kind of tuck themselves into that sound recording studio and record it mm -hmm. for you know an audience of one and their audience the audience is them or their teacher um endless possibilities you know, yeah, 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 allowing them that opportunity. Thank you. I just wanted to point it out, Helen. I think also as well, there's a there's a little bit of an increased safety factor for for parents' comfort zone in terms of audio files versus video files. Um, they don't necessarily want to have their children seen, <laughs> um, but might be more comfortable with them being heard in terms of sharing the students' uh, work uh, more publicly. So there may be an advantage in that. Yeah, and 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 also understanding that it's that public performance piece versus the uh, rehearsal and sandbox space where they they play and learn um, with the technology, um, so that what you hear is is their best piece of work at the end of a, a whole series of of um, sandbox explorations with sound. So you can record again and again and again until you get it right. Or use audacity and cut out the parts that make mis that where you make mistakes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to end the broadcast, and we can continue conversations in the digital space with Mad PD, other Mad PD pre presenters. Thanks for joining today. This is great, Helen. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Helen.